lot of people look to when Orton Plaza opened in the mid 80s, but it was really when the convention center opened that brought the Gaslamp Quarter and the greater downtown into its commercial uh, viability that it is today. But it also brought importance to hotels, residential, and recreational uses. The area that became the Gaslamp Quarter truly was the city's skid row. It was an area for rescue missions, it was an area for empty buildings, derelict buildings. The sidewalks themselves were in disrepair. And in a very short amount of time, with key catalyst projects like the Convention Center in the late 80s, this became a benefactor to the city. This is a very easy destination, whether that's for business or for tourism. Downtown San Diego is so uniquely situated with the water on one side, Balboa Park on the other, and then you've got SeaWorld and everything else towards the beaches. You can get everywhere here without having to rent a car. But the whole downtown is so walkable. We have so many people that never even have to worry about transportation. And if they got to go a little farther, there's a trolley right here. And they're right over to the center and onto their business and then right back out into the sunshine. That's what makes us so unique. To residents, I don't think they understand. That's the infill for your favorite restaurant, your favorite retailer. That keeps the business going all the time because not everybody can go out every night for dinner. But these hotels are huge economic generators for these businesses, the regular mom and pop businesses to be successful and be there when you want to go out. That's what really is the magic of the synergy between a gas lamp porter and a convention center. This is not able to be duplicated anywhere else in the city of San Diego or Southern California, or I would even argue anywhere in the nation. That's great music, I like that, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, you know, thanks for being here. What a, I was struck when we all were out in the room out there talking, what a great cross-section this is of San Diego, as we see representatives from organized labor from our business community, our hotel community, from our folks right here in the downtown residents. Um, it just reminds me what if, when all of us work together, we do great things in the city. And what a remarkable time to come together today, of course, to celebrate 25 years of one of the most important assets uh, that we have. And so I'm delighted to come by and just say a couple of brief remarks on this anniversary. And, and first and foremost, I want to thank all of the members of our Convention Center Board and our Convention Center staff. I want to say particular thanks to Nico, Carol Wallace, who are here. Let's give them a hand for all of the work that they do every single day. I'm not going to really throw out a lot of uh, numbers because I think we've talked about them and they're on some of the uh, seats there that you see today. But when you think about an economic engine, there is perhaps no greater example in this city than what this convention center has meant to us over the last 25 years. It has generated over $24 billion. That helps us repave roads, sidewalks, streetlights, and of course, police officers and firefighters. We look at our city's revenue, TOT taxes that are generated when we have conventions here, our third largest source of revenue in this city. When we have a thriving convention business, we're helping to provide neighborhood services up and down this great city of ours. And that's, I think, one of the most remarkable things about why we've been so successful here in San Diego over the last 25 years. 5,000 events. It's easily one of our most prominent, of course, and economic drivers. And that's why retaining those great events and conventions, talk every year about uh, Comic-Con, my colleague and I, Councilmember Gloria, it was great riding down that zip line this year. Uh, Todd, we'll have, to, we'll have to do that again. Uh, but that's, you know, as I said before, that's where the eyes of the nation are on San Diego in terms of our ability to continue to attract and expand our convention opportunities. And while nothing is easy, ladies and gentlemen, we will be expanding our convention opportunities here in this city. That will happen. So I said before, we do that when we, when we all come together. And I'm very optimistic, very optimistic about our ability to come together and get this across the finish line, uh, and we will. And I want to thank and mention some of the colleagues who are here from the City Council. Uh, I saw one of our former colleagues who was here today, Donna Fry. Uh, you know, we do great things. 
We do great things when we do look ahead to the, not just for what's happening now, but what we should be doing in the next five and 10 years. And so I think that's appropriate as we come together after 25 years to not just celebrate what this building has meant for our city and for our region, but we talk about what we should be doing for the next 25 years. So thank you for everything and all of you who have taken some time today to be here to celebrate this. Thank you for everything that you're doing for San Diego. You believe in San Diego. All of us do. We wouldn't be here today. Um, and when we look to what this, this center has meant, uh, what it continues to offer, that is something that, as mayor, I'm very, very proud of. As mayor, you know you have my 100% support as we expand these economic opportunities. And that when we come together, we will continue to do great things. So Nico, if I can have you come on up to the uh, stage, my friend, and perhaps Carol Wallace as well. Come on up. I want to present a little special proclamation, which is very long, which I will not read. <laughs> Warm round of applause for Carol Wallace and Lisa Calvert, our convention center friend. Thank you. And I will just read the last two parts of this. Whereas the San Diego Convention Center has given back to our local community by generously donating over 565 tons of food, clothing, and other items to charities. The reason I'm going to mention that, of course, is for why we're here tonight, to help with our you know, great program with our downtown partnership. Another example, the Convention Center giving back. Be it resolved that I, Kevin Faulkner, the 36th mayor of the city of San Diego, for on behalf of the citizens of San Diego, hereby proclaims November 14, 24th, 2014, to be San Diego Convention Center Day in the city of San Diego. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Sitting alongside the waterfront of beautiful San Diego Bay is the San Diego Convention Center. For 25 years, it has welcomed visitors from all around the world to our city. It's also hosted dignitaries, including presidents, celebrities, and the media. But it's more than just a building. It's a symbol of pride for the San Diegans who built it, represent it, and work in it, with a quarter of a century of memories to share. When I came to work here, it was just a big hole in the ground with four sides you could actually stand down in the parking garage and look up and see sky. And my thought was it was just another big construction job. I had no idea that the people that I was gonna be working with when I first started here were phenomenal. My job in the construction was an electrician. It changed really quickly. It was amazing to watch this place go up. I think we were still trying to take and get our arms around how we were going to take and manage a building that size. Every waking moment was studying the blueprints, going and researching what does what and how this operates. I went to my union hall and said I'd like to, you know, I'd been looking at this job. It was a little bit overwhelming. None of us knew each other and we spent most of the day trying to, you know, figure out who was who and who did what. First day, they brought in about 10,000 chairs that had to be moved, and uh, we started from there. Got to look at this bay every day for 25 years. This is my favorite spot. A lot of people, when we'd be out there, say, oh, this place is great, and we'd tell them, we're lucky enough to see this every day. I started as a part-time grounds worker in the grounds department. In the very beginning, there wasn't any landscaping here. It was all being put in. We have two acre, about two acres of turf. We have about 200,000 square feet of plantings that's maintained by the eight full-time grounds workers that we have on staff. The whole downtown area has changed because of the business that we bring to this area. When I first started working here, all of the gas lamp was completely different. There weren't the hotels across the street. And you could see every day when you walk through the gas lamp, how it's changed just because of the center and the business that the center brings? My first day was day one when the convention center opened. It started with a three-day celebration for the community. 
a lot of people attended. So I learned everything about the convention center. I also translated the tour into Spanish. It was very exciting to see this facility grow. And in no time we had conventions that were medical conventions, international conventions. You, you're in touch with the world. And it's just so exciting, you know, to assist. You feel so motivated by service. From sewing buttons to, to helping people come to San Diego and get the best impression that they can take from here. Welcome to the Port of San Diego. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on Port Tidelands. The port is the convention center's landlord, and no one ever invites the landlord to a party, so I'm, I'm going to keep this really short and try not to wear out my welcome. Um, we're more than just a landlord. Uh, we're a partner uh, from the very beginning. In 1989, the port contributed $200 million to the construction in cash of the convention center, creating 3,000 jobs in the process. A little bit over 10 years later, we contributed another $90 million to phase two and a $10 million interest-free loan. We've been a partner since the very beginning. We believe in the convention center because the convention center has been great to the Port of San Diego and it's been great to the region. How has it done that? By generating a tremendous amount of revenue, by filling our hotels, by filling our retail centers, by filling our restaurants. What does that allow the Port of San Diego to do? it allows it to be the economic engine that it is for the region, contributing $7.5 billion of annual economic impact, 57,000 jobs that are associated with the port upstream uh, around the Thailands and around the region. That allows the Port of San Diego to reinvest in the Thailands, in the Chula Vista Bayfront, the Lanefield Hotel that is being constructed, $130 million project, hundreds of jobs created. The North Embarcadero Visionary Plan Phase 1, which we will have a ribbon cutting ceremony next Saturday. I welcome you all to join us. An extreme uh, makeover of San Diego's front porch. So the Convention Center has allowed us to do that, fulfill our mission as a port, environmental stewardship, generating economic activity, public safety. We thank the Convention Center for all of those things. But I'm also gonna speak to you as a resident who has lived within a few blocks of the Convention Center for almost a decade. The convention center is more than just a convention center. It is a place that creates life and activity for the city of San Diego. My, uh, my stepson, when he was seven, eight, nine years old, he would look at the convention center and he would say to me, what is that thing? And I said, well, that's a convention center. And you know, he really didn't understand what that meant. And he said to me, it looks like an intergalactic space station. I said, well, there are some people with vision who built this thing, and they, they know a heck of a lot more about vision and architecture than me, but you know, I think it's supposed to have some nautical elements and sort of look like a ship. He said, what's nautical? What is, what is that? I said, well, it's related to the sea. But you see, the folks who had the vision to build this place, they had a true vision, and it is a vision that never gets old and never gets tired. A child can see it through his or her eyes, and it will be permanent and eternal. And that's what this place is. It's a real vision, it's a real place. It's made my life a better place, it's made my family's life a better place, and it makes the region a better place for all of us every single day. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, and congratulations to the Convention Center. It's just after 9 a.m. And the freezer at the San Diego Convention Center's main kitchen is prepped for a donation. This food, left over from a large meeting of more than 6,000 scientists, is not going to waste. It's all being donated by Centerplate, the Convention Center's in-house caterer to the San Diego Rescue Mission. We have had a long-standing relationship with uh, San Diego Convention Center and with Centerplate. Um, that relationship has yielded us thousands and thousands of pounds of food every year. We are picking up at a hundred locations every day and certainly one of the largest is the amount of food that we get from the convention center. 
We house over 400 people here every single night, so you can do the arithmetic times 365. It's a pretty sizable number. These donations also supply food to the Rescue Mission's Partners for Hunger Relief program, which is made up of 46 smaller nonprofits. Each one depends on the generosity of others, including the San Diego Convention Center and Centerplate. The relationship with the um, San Diego Convention Center is one of our strongest financial supports, not generally seen by the public. Uh, they don't get listed on donor records other than our own. If somebody wanted to go in, they can certainly see that. So when we're having conventions here, a lot of people attend those conventions and after two days of going to meetings, we do a little tap dance and say, thank you, Lord. As much as we pride ourselves on feeding the masses and, and getting everything out on time, quality, hot, when you see all the extra waste that comes back, it does feel good not to have, just simply throw it into the trash that it can be benefited once again. The Convention Center and Center Plate have donated 565 tons of food to the rescue mission. Just last year, donations totaled 131,000 pounds of food. It's a sustainability, really. The food being prepped in this kitchen benefits another community partner, San Diego's Monarch School. This special public school educates and enriches the lives of children impacted by homelessness. The food donations from Centerplate help these students learn communication skills through a program called Speak for Treats. It was all started by a former teacher and volunteer who wanted to give back to his community. When I moved downtown, that was the first time I became aware of Monarch School through a neighbor. And she put me in touch with Dana Harwood, who's an eighth grade teacher. And thanks to the convention center, we've been able to put on this wonderful activity every year where the kids get to meet and talk to and hold conversations with adults they have never met before. Through this program, eighth grade Monarch School students learn basic conversation skills, such as how do you introduce yourself to someone? What questions should you ask? and how do you carry on a basic conversation? All with food and treats donated by Centerplate as a reward. When we hosted the lunch for them here, it was a new experience for them. They were, wow, they'd never seen anything like that. We taught them table manners, how the table was set, how we serve from the left, pull from the right. So the whole experience for them to have like a sit down lunch was be kind of an eye-opening experience for them. Throughout the year, the San Diego Convention Center is proud to partner with many other organizations, including Technology Training Foundation of America, Veterans Village, local libraries, churches, schools, and Neighborhood House Association, just to name a few. Giving back is an important part of the Convention Center's philosophy. We're more than just conventions. We're the Center for Community Partnerships. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is wonderful to see so many familiar faces here in the audience this evening, or this afternoon. Uh, our uh, fellow elected officials, I'm glad that we caught Senator Block, who's here. It's great to see you. Uh, appointed officials, uh, certainly our community partners, uh, and most importantly, in my mind, the employees of the San Diego Convention Center, both past and present. Uh, and to those individuals who are here today, I just want to let you know that I'm well aware of the fact that it takes a lot of work to keep the moving parts of this building uh, running so very smoothly. And so I'd like to just take a moment uh, to extend my thanks and that of all of our council members, including Councilmember Harris, who is here, uh, to thank you for your involvement and for your great work over 25 years. This building would not be the success it is if it wasn't for the employees who work here. So congratulations, guys. And just because he said it, uh, Commissioner Castellanos, I'm glad that you know that you're the landlord of this facility. I'll be sending some service repair requests your way <laughs> shortly. We got about 30, 40 million in needs around here. Um, you could take till next week to get it done. It's okay. It's all right. I'll let you in. I'll give you access. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to work with you, Raphael. All right. 
So as you just saw in the video, this building has an incredibly positive impact uh, in our surrounding community. And I know that firsthand as the council member fortunate enough to represent this fine facility on the city council. This is more than just tax revenues. There's so many benefits uh, to our broader community. Years of community partnerships with local schools and social service programs, as you saw in the video, combined with an unwavering environmental leadership has thrusted this facility to the forefront of meeting facility spaces uh, around the world. And they teach, they're telling those other places how to do it and how to do it right. Since opening in 1989, the San Diego Convention Center has been an industry leader in the green movement, uh, constantly finding ways to minimize its, uh, its large events impact on the environment while benefiting our community. Just a couple of quick examples. You all are enjoying the food, and isn't the food pretty good? Yeah. As you saw in the video, that's brought to you by Centerplate, but a little bit of information you may not know. All the food here in this facility comes from local farms and suppliers who are, have to be within 100 mile radius of this facility. So they're buying local, which is tremendous. Also interesting that you may not know, 150 tons annually, all the food scraps from this facility are composted, meaning that behind this wall, there is no need to have garbage disposals in the kitchen, and there aren't any. Uh, food waste is not the only thing that they divert uh, from our, our community's landfills. More than 850 tons of materials, ranging from cardboard and wood to carpet and cooking oil, are recycled annually. Uh, that weight is the equivalent of three Boeing 747s. That's pretty heavy. Um, environmentally conscious design also has allowed this uh, building to uh, prevent the release of 898 metric tons of carbon dioxide annually, which is equal to the emissions of 176 passenger vehicles for roughly the same amount of time. And this building is also a marvel of energy efficiency. Uh, upgraded healing, heating and cooling system saves 2.7 million kilowatt hours annually. And this is the first convention, city, uh, convention center in the nation to use 100% fluorescent lights in ex exhibit halls, meaning that it saves 1.3 million kilowatts uh, per annually as well. Uh, th this all means that overall this facility back in 2011 achieved LEED Silver certification, demonstrating that you don't have to be a new building in order to be environmentally conscious. You just have to be committing to, committed to doing the hard work to do so. I think that's tremendous, and I appreciate the leadership of the Convention Center. Now, lastly, uh, and I'm happy to invite up uh, our next uh, group of folks. You saw in the video the commitment of this corporation uh, to the homeless in the community. I think many of you who know me know that this is the issue that I'm passionate about. It's the reason I ran for office. And this is why it gives me great pleasure to welcome up to the stage Chris Michelle of this Downtown San Diego Partnership and Nico Ferraro, the chair of the San Diego Convention Center Corporation Board for a check presentation, continuing the commitment that you saw in the video to the food and feeding of our homeless neighbors to make a check presentation today, continuing in that, that commitment to the Making Change Count initiative. And to tell you a little bit more about that uh, will be Chris Michelle. Well, thank you, Council President Todd Gloria. It certainly is an honor to be here today. And Carol, this has been a long journey, hasn't it? I've been with Carol since day one on this journey, and it has been fabulous. Um, this center really personally means a lot to me because I worked for Mayor Golding when she came into office. They had just finished phase one. Tom Legler, I hear he's here today. Um, he was the first GM. I didn't know what a GM was at the time, and I thought, someday I want to be that guy. And it was fabulous. Phase two happened under Susan Golding, and phase three will happen under Mayor Kevin Faulkner. I am confident. So thank you, Carol, Nico, Center Plate, for this amazing lunch and the entire Convention Center board, both current and past. You truly have made this place a civic treasure. It's an honor to celebrate the 25th anniversary, and this facility has had such a significant impact on not only downtown, but our entire region. 
Today's donation of $50,000 will make a real impact in our downtown. We will use that money to house and reunite with their families over 350 individuals. And that is 350 lives that we will be changing because of your generosity. So I just want to thank Bahija, who is here with us, Hamraz, who is our executive director right there. Would you please stand? And Lucky and Kelly, would you please stand? These folks work every day out in the streets helping our homeless get off the streets permanently. So thank you all for your support. And let's continue to celebrate. Oh, I've been here 12 years, but my first day was exciting. Oh, this is a big building. I'm not going to get it. It was exciting and scary at the same time. I was awestruck. Well, you know what happened is I got lost. I don't know if I want to say that. The building is constantly changing. The walls do move. <laughs> the walls have moved indeed. With more than 5,000 events in 25 years, we've welcomed nearly 20 million visitors from around the world to the San Diego Convention Center. Every week there's something new moving in. It's, it's not the same old thing, and it's, it, it's one of the things that really makes it exciting. When attendees visit the San Diego Convention Center, their first contact is most often with an employee. More than 200 full-time and 300 part-time staff are here every day, 24 hours a day, making up the heart and soul of the facility. From meeting planners to cleaning services, engineers, groundskeepers, administrative staff, communications, IT, you name it, there's a sense of pride, or as we call it, the San Diego spirit in every one of us. The best thing about working here has to be the people. My coworkers, the people. All the people. The people. It's the camaraderie. I felt welcomed right away, right when I got here. You're going to get knowledge, and skills, and it's going to be wonderful for you. Employees at the San Diego Convention Center take customer service to heart because you never know who's going to ask you for your help. He was lost. Him and his bodyguard and I helped uh, James Earl Jones go to the Marriott from Hall A. Every time I see Lion King, I think, oh, so that was something. And it's such a welcoming environment that some staff even have multiple family members who also just happen to be coworkers. I have uh, my sister, my auntie, two nephews, and the reason why they're working here is also because I tell them about this uh, great uh, place that is very great to work every, over here. Well, the only thing I can say one more thing is if there's an opening in there, let people know that they can apply over here, and they can have a nice family, San Diego spirit over here, the way we take care of each other. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and on behalf of the corporation, I want to thank you for joining us today, uh, 25 years. Doesn't seem like that long but also to remind you that uh, we've raised funds to support the Downtown Partnerships Homeless Outreach Efforts. I want to thank uh, Mayor Falkner and Council Member President Gloria for joining us in this celebration and to thank the title sponsors for their generosity, the Unified Port District of San Diego, and as Raphael mentioned, they are our landlord. And Council President wasn't kidding when uh, he mentioned those figures. <laughs> but thank you, Commissioner Castellanos, for your remarks today. And it's been an incredible team effort today to put the food on the table. I want to thank uh, our professionals of Center Plate who've prepared uh, and served this delicious meal for us today. I, I also want to thank our silver sponsors smart city who each and every day <laughs> provide the technology backbone to this facility and to thank each and every one of you who have purchased a table or just a ticket we just want to say thanks 
thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been my honor this year to represent the board, and I want to recognize some of the people uh, in attendance today that have served on the board, past and present uh, members. So if you uh, had been on the board, or you were on the board, or you are on the board, please stand and be recognized. And being a labor guy, I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to acknowledge our labor partners who have been so instrumental in the many accolades this facility and staff have earned over the past 25 years to our labor partners. Thank you. Uh, without the employees, as uh, council member Glory and others mentioned this place is just concrete and steel, so we acknowledge you for all that you do for us. But we now have 25 years of success under our belts. We become the envy of the industry, winning awards and leading the way. And we are often imitated. Of course, that is the surest sign that we are doing something right. But we already know that. This facility has helped put San Diego on the global map. People visit us from around the world. But in this competitive environment, standing still is losing ground. We must continue to find a way to build on our success with a contiguous phase three expansion of this facility. We need the thousands of new jobs it will create, the tax revenues it will generate, and the infrastructure necessary for us to stay on top of our game. I hope you will join me working so that we can build on this success. And thank you for listening. Now I'll turn it over to our leader, our president and CEO, Carol Wallace. Thank you, thank you, Nico. A center for all, the center for all is our theme. And it really is, to all of you, we want to thank you for making us the success that we are today. It is a team effort, and all of you have made that happen. I especially want to thank our employees for our success. Many of them have been here for 25 years. We would not be celebrating our success without their passion, dedication, and commitment to this facility. I think you've heard already one of the earliest employees is here in the audience today. That's Tom Legler. Tom, where are you? I, is he here? Well, I know he was coming because he called for, for directions and we had a parking. And <laughs> I'm not, not for directions, called for parking directions, that is. But Tom was the first general manager of the convention and led the center from 1985 to 1991. It really was Tom's vision that put, that shaped our success and put San Diego on the map. From day one, we were a standout to our competition. And I was in another city, so I knew that because I was watching San Diego from other cities. <laughs> And uh, Tom, you know, just want he's not here, but just want to thank him for his um, leadership. Also, we would like to thank two people who are not with us anymore. Uh, Carol Armstrong was the first um, marketing director, and he was here from 1988 to 1995 before returning to Baltimore to head their bureau. And then uh, Les Land, who headed our security department and created a, a Cracker Jack team. And in fact, they were the team that on my first day of work, when I got lost and locked out of the building, they found me and brought me back to the office. <laughs> We have been fortunate to be here in San Diego to have a world-class facility on the bay. And while the iconic architecture reminds us daily of this beautiful facility's role in our civic life, the real secret to our success are the hundreds of employees who have joined us here today. Before the center opened in this past week, more than 7,000 people have worked here and walked through the doors of the convention center. 
Our employees are truly the heart and soul of this facility, and I would like to ask all of our employees, our partner employees, Center Plate, Smart City, PSEV, please stand and be acknowledged for your passion, your service, and your 25 years of dedication. Please stand. Come on, guys, you're not shy. <laughs> Thank you, thank, thank you. We, we have 19 languages on staff, so we can translate almost anything. <laughs> Speaking of passion, Rob Huff worked at the convention center in our sales department many years ago. He was also our poet laureate, and he would write poets, poems for special occasions, and today is still truly a special occasion. Rob continues to perform and travel the world, but he's here today with his niece, Stacy Antonell, and they have a special selection for us. Rob and Stacy. Oh Lord, won't you double the SDCC? Our clients all tell us, build it and you'll see. My neighbors are jealous but bigger than me. So, oh Lord, won't you double the SDCC? <laughs> ooh, 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 yeah. <clears throat> ooh, ooh, ooh. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Uh, this is a real special treat for me. How many people are feeling old today? <laughs> uh, the opportunity for me to actually um, represent all the past employees it's pretty special. Um, I don't know how this happened. Um, I do know that my background is a little varied. I was here when we started with Carol Armstrong. We booked 352 days a year of the first year. Almost got to three, 365, but um, I, I worked here for a while. Then we went over and opened uh, another convention center. So I actually sold against you, much like Carol did. Kind of interesting perspective. And then I've been a meeting planner for the last six years, and so I kind of know what the market is out there. And, and I want to tell you about that, that this is a really special, special spot. And I want to tell you why. The, uh, the opportunity to see what this building represents from an outside looking in is very special. The convention center, when we opened, had certain elements to it that we didn't really understand, but it sounded good. It was, it was really kind of driven, and it was uh, like a spirit, the spirit of core. It's called the San Diego spirit, in fact. And when a group of us, Sandra Marino Butler and Joe Davis among them, went over to Honolulu and opened that convention center, we took with us that kind of ethic, that ethos, and it, and it paid off pretty well, but it was interesting to look back and see San Diego. And there's a thing inside Hawaii, you're all from the West Coast, you all know, it's called Aloha, right? And it can be a little you know, cheesy at some point, but it's pretty much a pretty heavy ethic over there. And the reason it works over there is because it's so deep-seated. And no other destination has that. But San Diego has a portion of that. They have an ethic like that. And the, the notion of Aloha in Hawaii is, is kind of exemplified by, for instance, uh, a waitress at the Sheraton Waikiki had that job for 30 years. Or the bellhop at the Royal Hawaiian has had that job for 10 years, but his father had it for 42 years. And that's the kind of deep-seated thing that exists. And you have that over here, amazingly enough. And you have that for two reasons. One, because you started from scratch and you could build it. And more importantly, is you had two individuals who drove it. I guess Tom is not here, but Mr. Ligler came into this facility with a a DNA that came from running Anaheim for 21 years. And Anaheim is across the street from, Aloha, from um, Disney. And you had that, that one of the best ethics that there, there ever was in terms of a service level. He brought that here and he instilled it in us. And then you had Carol Wallace who kept it running for 20 plus years. So it's pretty amazing. So my credentials are intact when I say that it's an amazing organization. And, and there are other management companies that will come into a city and try to take over your convention center. They will come in and say, we can do a better job, Philadelphia, running that center than you can, or the incumbent can, and they will bid on it. They will get the five-year contract with a two-year option to renew, and then they'll in try to infuse energy and pride into that, and it's virtually impossible to do that. Without having that blank slate 
and that ability to impact that from the beginning, it's very, very difficult. And I know this as a meeting planner for the last six years, I've been to over 50 destinations. I've been solicited by them, I've visited them, I've done site inspections, and what you have here is, is amazing. And you need to really love that because it's very special. So the, the group here has a number of anecdotal stories I'm sure we could tell, but we only have room for a little bit. And I don't know, after my pedigree of resume, why Carol would allow me to have a microphone in front of you. It really <laughs> could be a big mistake. But the one thing that I'd like to share is in 1991, outside Ballroom C at 2 a.m. in the morning, there was a modest group of aficionados watching their films and reading their comic books. Now you know who I'm talking about, right? And you gotta imagine what, what a great opportunity for this city, and I'm speaking for the city now, not just the center, to be aligned with Comic-Con and to take what has to be a miraculous, successful show and, and go and grow with it. And it's not only miraculous in 125,000 people, I suppose they could do 200,000 if you had an expanded center, for instance. But they are capable of, of reaching global, um, global reach. I mean, it's amazing. And I was in Europe when I heard about it. Not heard about it, but saw it advertised. So it's a great opportunity. But now it's 2 o'clock in the morning. We're in outside a ballroom. And it's 2, and we're, it's two o'clock because we just did a, uh, an entertainment event. I was booking Jimmy Buffett up there, or we did a Hispanic dance down below, or Reva McIntyre. We pissed off the city because of the noise and stuff. And we were walking down the hall, and one of the Comic-Con gentlemen said to Ben Velasquez, who was the director of event services, he had a question, right? And so Ben had to answer that, but he needed a response from another event manager, Tom, Tom McMahon. So he radioed Tom. He said, Tom McMahon, come in. Tom McMahon, come in. Tom McMahon, what's your 20? And we look back at this kid from Comic-Con, and he goes, you have an event manager named Atomic Man? Oh my God, you are so cool. <laughs> and that's why we kept the relationship going. There. <laughs> True story. Without further ado, I would like to do a little, a little song that I wrote for y'all. And in case, it's not, in case it's not a good song, deniability here with the hat. And I'm gonna bring out my, my niece. Miss Stacy Antonell, she's here. All right. Now I really wanted to dedicate this to Tom Ligler, but fortunately he's not here. But you ready? Yes. Yes. You scared? A little bit. It's been 25. Oh man, that's a long, long time. But we have survived. Oh darling, you're looking fine. It's gone by so fast. Well, some here might not agree. But now we're here. It's time to toast that glass of beer. Folks, please always remember. The building is just a building. The concrete doesn't have its own soul. That's what the staff is here for. So really, it's up to people. That's right. To give the place a heart and its soul. Well, that's just the way that we are. So roll. here's to the crew. Well, present and past as well. As we salute you. Well, you've been the glue, the gel. You gotta be proud. Well, stand up and take a bow. Just look around. It really, truly does astound. For 25 years you've Playing killed it. at the top of your game. Imagine those who said don't build it. What were they thinking insane? So hats off to you. Cause baby it's been so long And now that we close We're well, thanking our partners too A question I'll pose In covers you know we love you How do we truly, a truly find success? Are you being rhetorical or should we guess? It's really just so very simple Oh yeah employees that make you the best well as our clients attest so keep kicking ass sorry baby it's been so, so long. long expansion is never, never wrong oh, baby it's been so long 